Hello! Today we finished the kinetic picture, putting together the gears made in the last video. The thumbs will get a workout. The frame is made primarily from a front piece and a back piece. Start with the back piece. Push in small end pieces into the back frame. These hold the gears in place. Put all 10 pieces into the back piece. Line the pieces up vertically before pushing them in. Use assistance if all else fails. The light decided it wanted to be in the shot. Ignore it and it will go away. Put the back frame aside with the end pieces on the bottom. Repeat with the front frame, although initially only inserting seven end pieces. The other three go in later. Stack the front and back frames with the front on top. Next, put the first side piece in to connect the front and back frame. The first side piece is difficult to install because the front and back frames are still separate and hard to align from one corner. Once the side piece is in position, insert a shim to lock it in place. Add another side piece at 90 degrees. Now to add the first gear. This is the big wheel gear. It may take some tweaking to get both ends into the proper holes. Once in, the first gear should spin freely. Next is a small gear. As you might expect, it goes right next to the large gear. Test the gear train. Now insert the gear with the ratchet and invisible string. Make sure the string is unwound and trailing away from the gear. Keep testing the gears. Next is the wind-up gear. The knob at the top needs to be pulled out to insert. Once the gear is in, put the knob back in. Next, insert the gear with discs that are close together. This connects to the ratchet gear. Keep checking the gear train. Now insert the gear with discs that are farther apart. Finally, insert the gear that looks like a squashed cylinder. This is actually part of the brake mechanism. Next, insert three skinny gears. These are used to shepherd the invisible string around the outside of the frame. Make sure each gear spins freely. After the three gears have been placed, add the last three end pieces on the top frame. Be gentle, the gears are still only loosely assembled. Add a side piece to the bottom left frame. Make sure you have the right piece number. Keep pushing and shifting the side piece until it moves into position. Then lock it in place. Put a beam into the slot near the middle of the picture. Get the piece correctly positioned and then lock it in place. Pull the invisible thread around the small gears to get it to the bottom right of the frame. The thread needs to be on the lower or back half of the small gears. Ed is completely ignoring the order of the side pieces. The general idea is to add enough pieces to strengthen the frame before putting any tension on the string or the gears. The actual order is not that critical.
Once the bottom right side piece has been added, it's time to connect the thread and the rubber band. There's a small piece shaped like a U. Take the end with a notch and put the loop of thread around it. Next, find the large rubber band and add it onto the wood piece. Thread the rubber band between the small gear and the side piece. Next, find a small S-shaped piece. Place this in a hole. Once it is locked in place, you want to pull the rubber band so that it slips onto the S piece. There is a hook device from the kit, but Ed found that his fingers worked better. Now test the full gear train, turn the knob clockwise several times. It should start turning as soon as there is some tension in the string. The last major piece is the brake system. This is basically a wood piece that is pushed against the large cylinder to lock the gears. Toothpicks are involved, so be careful. The toothpick acts as a pivot between the lever and the brake pad. Once the brake is assembled, set it aside. Now, put in the custom side piece. If the brake is put in while the side piece is being positioned, it will fall out. This side piece, although specific for this use, is added like all the other side pieces. Position the brake and insert two wood dowels to lock the brake into place. Each dowel has to go through a hole in the front frame, the brake, and the back frame. Keep pushing the dowels until they are flush with the front frame. It may take some patience. Check that the switch easily moves between locked and unlocked positions. There are a few final pieces to finish the picture. First, there is a small beam placed at the bottom center of the picture. Two more side pieces need to be added at the bottom right and the top left. This stiffens the frame to handle the tension in the gears, string, and rubber band. For some reason, Ed added a shim to the wrong side. It doesn't matter that much, but it looks odd. Finally, there's a small top beam along the rectangular piece. This allows you to hang the kinetic picture on a wall. Now that everything is together, wind it up and watch it run. There you go, a working kinetic picture.